Hey guys, today, hey, today we're gonna be watching uh, why was Italy so ineffective in World War II by armchair historian. Let's go ahead and answer this question then, which is a fair question to ask. Um, you know they Italy, I guess, has never really. It hasn't been since Roman times where they've been truly known for their military power because for the last, up until the unification of Italy, they were pretty much under the control of either the French, Spanish, or Austrians, essentially, and then the Pope in the middle. That's kind of what Italy was for a large part of its history after the fall of Rome. So then, but they did fight for their independence and won, and they got it. They got their unification in around the same time as Germany. But then in a span of 70 years, while the Germans maintain a pretty high, high level of competency in their military, the Italians, on the other hand, don't. And they did pr a good job in World War One. Granted, they were fighting the Austrian Hungarians, who were definitely not competent in World War One. Um, but they held off the Austro-Hungarians. Anyways, let's go ahead and see what his answer is to this question. Hi, I'm Griffin Johnson, the Armchair Historian. Hello. Today's episode: Why Italy was so incompetent during the Second World War. This should be fun. Animation quality has certainly gone up since since this video, you can tell. Same with the art style. Fascist Italy's military has long been the target of ridicule aimed at its lack of competence and commitment to duty. In this video, we'll be evaluating the factors that inhibited the Italian military during the Second World War and examine whether or not the poor reputation of fascist Italy's military, which continues to this day largely in the form of internet memes, is entirely deserved. Now let's yeah. begin by providing a bit of context. Joining me today is potential history to do just that. Since 1922, Italy was under the leadership of Benito Mussolini, known as Il Duce, or The Leader. What Il Duce meant... Let me tell you, that's a creative name right there. If I've ever heard one, then we historians, we're, we're known for our creative names. Imagined was nothing less than the restoration of the Roman Empire, an ambition even Hitler prodded, going as far as to call him one of the Caesars. Now, although I'm sure that Big Chin himself meant every word of his intentions, in reality it turned out, well... I won't spoil it for you. Bad. It turned out very bad. Even though there were clearly grand ambitions behind the troops Mussolini sent to the field, the fact of the matter was that they received substandard equipment, including thinly armored and very undergunned tanks. If you want to learn more specifically about Italian armor, check out my video in the description below. Let's start by analyzing Italy's leadership during the Second World War. Naturally, we'll start with Big Chin himself. Mussolini Chin. was eager to get involved, but Pietro Badoglio and Italo Balbo, two of his top marshals, advised him to be patient. In his mind, there was no doubt that the world would soon be subjected to Axis rule, and he was hoping to secure territory for Italy. As a result, Mussolini ignored his army's logistical deficiencies, which became very apparent just two weeks into the Italian invasion of France. This was exacerbated by the lack of equipment, some of which had been lost due to Mussolini's involvement in wars in Spain and East Africa. To make matters worse, the Italian high command was simply not up to par with those of the other great powers. Many of Mussolini's marshals only gained their positions because of their political affiliation and personal loyalty rather than military experience. Incompetence was not limited to the upper echelons of the command structure, however. McGregor Knox, in his book on the subject, provides the following explanation as to why. Italian society's peasant base, relatively small industrial sector, and narrowly selective educational system meant a pervasive shortage of technical talent that placed severe limits on the extent to- Yeah, true. The Italian economy, especially at this time, was nowhere near the levels of the rest of Europe. Well, when I say rest of Europe, I'm talking about the powers of Europe that Italy was trying to really be equal to, that being France, Britain, and Germany. Italy did not have a strong industry. 
I think in some aspects they don't really have too strong of one today even. And yes, they did have still a peasant base in their society and their education system. Yeah. Uh now that 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 typically tends to be a problem. To which the Italian armed forces could imagine. If your people don't have access to education, you're not really going. Don't expect yourself to. Don't expect your nation to have advancements in technology, uh, the ability to produce a bunch of tools at cheap costs, essentially. But yeah. All those factors played into it, as well as other factors, as I am certain he'll get into. Imagine, commission, operate, and maintain complex machinery. This translated into a widespread failure to adapt to the changing nature of combat, with many officers preparing their soldiers for First World War era scenarios and equipping them with outdated weapons. Something that seems to be a theme in World War II is when a nation prepares themselves for the tactics of World War I, and that correlates to how efficient they are in the war. Germany was not prepping for a trench war. They were prepping for fast mobility. France was prepping for trench warfare. Italy was prepping for trench warfare. And we can kind of see that. But one of these nations adapted over the course of the war while the other didn't. Which nation is that? Well, that would be France that adapted, of course. Italy did not. <laughs> but they did switch sides. In terms of industrial capacity and natural resources, Italy was also at a disadvantage. To give you an idea of how dire the situation truly was, at one point the Italian infantry divisions were short roughly 15,000 contemporary artillery guns, but the Italian military factories... Uh, Meatball Launcher 3. ...could only produce 8% of that number in a year. Furthermore, the artillery that was available to the Italian soldiers was often defective in some way. In Frank Joseph's book, he quotes an Australian soldier, Robert Donovan, who professed that the Italian artillerymen was definitely good at their trade, but we were saved from serious casualties because of the amazingly poor quality of their projectiles. Many failed to burst, and those that did were ineffective. Throughout the war, the industries of Britain and its allies outcompeted Italian industries in producing artillery, aircraft, and ships alike. And much like Germany, Italy suffered from a dearth of natural resources like coal and oil that were needed to power those factories in the first place. Now that we understand that both Italy's command... Yeah, another thing that plagued Italy though too, as he's stating, Germany did have some natural resources. Not exactly what they were, not all that they needed, but they had a decent amount. Italy on their hand, on the other, eh, on the other hand, was lacking way more than Germany was. So, yikes. And resource output were inferior to its neighbors. Let's analyze Italy's forces and equipment. The Navy was by far the best thing that Italy had going for it. Its presence in the Mediterranean Sea was imposing, its destroyers, submarines, and torpedo boats outnumbering those of Britain and France in the region. But the Navy suffered from two significant drawbacks. Number one, it was hindered by fuel shortages. And number two, like the infantry, it could not depend on the Air Force. This is largely a result of the Air Force's disorganized state, being composed of myriad aircraft types. Ooh. Like the infantrymen bearing World War I era weapons, some some Italian pilots were forced to fly in outdated biplanes oh, even no. during the final stages of the war. Not to mention, in September 1939, less than half of Italy's planes were operational. But of all three military branches, one could easily make the argument that ground forces suffered the most from equipment and supply shortages. In 1940, only about a quarter of Italy's divisions were supplied with a sufficient amount of weapons and rations. Those Yikes. weapons that did make it into the hands of the soldiers were at times outdated, with the newly adopted Carcano rifle being sometimes exchanged for World War I era rifles because of its limited range, accuracy, and jamming issues. What's more, as of 1937, each infantry division was composed of only two infantry regiments instead of three. Thus, as the total numbers of divisions increased, the fighting capacity of each division decreased. Each of these new divisions needed a new commander as well, and Italy suffered from a sort of martial brain drain. 
Granted, the binary system did provide each Italian division with more maneuverability, but this advantage was nullified by the fact that the Italians were facing motorized enemies on the battlefield. By and large, Italian divisions were non-motorized as the country did not have the industrial capacity to produce automotive parts. On the whole, we can definitively conclude that the Italian military performed poorly during the Second World War. It failed to make a breakthrough in France, failed to invade Greece and Yugoslavia without first soliciting German support, and failed to assert control over North Africa despite outnumbering British forces in Libya 10 to 1 during its planned invasion of Egypt. Mm. As such, mm. Italy's string of failures and early capitulation in 1944 can be better attributed to brash leadership, a lack of industrialization, scarce resources, as well as equipment shortages and deficiencies, as opposed to a scarcity of brave and dutiful soldiers. This seems to be the consensus among modern historians, although in William L. Shirer's book, The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, another less heard of argument is put forth. Schreier points to the lack of popular support among Italian people who, unlike the Germans, never truly embraced fascism to explain the inability of Mussolini's regime to address the problems we've discussed throughout this video. Now on to our sponsor. Fair video. Fair. Uh, unlike his newer videos, which seem to be telling more of a story, uh, and honestly, this is a good video. This is generally well, well made video, but you can definitely tell he has gotten so much better at not only writing, but also editing and putting these videos together over time. Specifically, the writing has gotten a lot better. This was very short, very brief. And it was very much like a, uh, like an essay, like a, like an essay that, uh, as a historian, you would write for a class, a brief, like five minute essay or five page essay or something that you would essentially write in class. Um, I think, I think he brought up all the points that needed to be brought up when it, came to Italy's ineffectiveness I personally would have liked a little bit more of a because obviously all you really when you need to talk about weapons and stuff I think you don't need to go too much in depth you can just be like yeah they didn't have the resources nor the manpower capability industry sector to make the guns and artillery that's really all you need to say about that but then but while in this video there was a brief mention of the leadership I think a greater emphasis should have been brought upon how the leadership affected Italy's ineffectiveness slash effectiveness in World War II instead of the lack of guns because we you can already draw to the conclusion that guns will bring ineffectiveness you know if they don't work right that's just I feel like that's an obvious conclusion to come to but I think a greater emphasis needs to be, to be brought upon the leadership that was there. And that's kind of what I was hoping for. But this video is fairly old in regards to this channel and to when he made this. So I'm willing to let it. It can pass. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's still a good video. It, he argues for the points that he wants. You know, he covers everything that he really kind of needs to cover in a short seven minute video on the topic so yeah well that'll do it for today hope you guys enjoyed remember to hit the like button and subscribe for more leave a comment down below down below as to what you'd like to see me react to next see you guys next time thank you